Uh, you guys have probably met them on this guy's bodyguard. Uh, we're going to go after the safe. Uh, so I keep him around. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you the basics. We're going to run down the top for a few minutes. I'll tell you about the games. And then we'll start going through some blocks and strikes and go on to the to breakdowns and techniques. Uh, Sunday, we'll put more, more depth into the system. To let you know what's going on, I started this back in 95. I was visiting my brother in Palm Springs. We got out of there three days. Uh, over the age of 65, we were the And two of them came to know if they had a man. And my brother said it happens all the time. This is Palm Springs. And uh, it, it clicked that people that have canes don't have to have their hands. And then after researching it, there's canes in other people's system, but there's no system on a cane. I found a niche. And I've been going full, full bore out ever since then. Now we have. Kate Masters is my company name, and the one that's financing all the other stuff, but the main system is called the American Kane system. You go all the way to, uh, you've got all the way to 10 degree class. You start out with eight, eight steps, we have the DVDs, go all the way to first degree, and then step down that, you have to run out of cane in a samurai sword style, how to fence with the cane, how to make the cane, etc., etc. So it's all the way up to the ladder. Um, it's a regular traditional system. One rule I do have is you have to be at least 18 year old to become a black belt. Okay, so I can see you cover it over and I'll be black belt for the case you right here. <laughs> so, yeah. All the canes are made out of hardwood. The ones you have here tonight are what I've been doing the last couple of years because it's tough to find people that know how to dry the wood properly to bend it. Uh, the strongest cane that we can bend properly is hickory. Uh, what I call four different flavors of hickory. You have pure hickory, but my record, uh, hickory is a white color. And you have hickory with heart, which has some, uh, it's called the sapwood, the white one is called the sapwood, and you have the hardwood, which is starting out with the honey, and you kind of, what area it grows up in, you draw all the way to the mountains. And uh, you have pure hickory heart, and then you have one that I named myself, I call it thumper. About 20% heavier. It's almost like carrying around a tree trunk. Those are the ones that Tom wants to carry <laughs> But uh, you have to dry the wood properly. If the, if the wood is kill dried, it develops honeycombs inside. The honeycomb is a void. Some of the voids are two or three inches long, quarter inch round. So they pretty much make the cane jump. So it, uh, it took me a few years to figure out that it has to be dried properly so you can bend it properly. They bend it usually at about 27% water and let it dry out to 15. We soak all our canes in mineral oil. That gives it a nice, it feeds the cane. If you don't put it in mineral oil, it's in a very moist place, it'll turn back into a stick. I was in Hawaii, I had a good friend of my cane, I was there for six months, by the end of six months, they turned my cane into a stick. So that's when I started doing the mineral oil process. That stops from bending. If the person that bends the cane does not use the proper attitude, and it's almost like a fabric softener where the, the graining uh, takes the memory out of the graining and you bend it and it dries up again, it comes back and thinks it's what's supposed to be bent. But then when the moisture gets back to it again and don't take good care of it, uh, it, it can go straight up again, depending on where you are. When you get a cane, take care of it. Then I get your best friend. I recommend. Okay, you sand it down probably. If you don't want to spend the money and get a good tongue oil to put on there and stuff, get a nice furniture polish or even a, a car wax. You wouldn't put the car wax on until you have to start putting a finish on it. So get a good polish, polish it up once a month and keep the cane and it brings the colors out of it, keeps the fed, and it won't crack up on anything else. Okay, I make, most of you guys here all have training canes. Okay, this is technically a street cane. Because it has the end, you come in, I can take somebody around, I can pretty much make you go anywhere I want to with this thing. I have nastier ones. This is kind of what I call a standard street cane. I used to make it real nasty. In fact, this is the horn of the cane right here. I make it nasty enough, you put the horn on your finger, your finger will put it. I took one of those to the Senate building in Washington, D.C. In fact, I also have what I call shark teeth. Let me show you what those are. Okay. These are 
sharp seat. They're made for raking. I can take anybody here and put you on your knees in about a half a second these. I can go across your any bone, skin on it, very, very perfect. Uh, if you put it on the shin, you'll be down on your knees. I mean, I had one of my students, uh, was 22 years old, 6 foot 10, 410 pounds, solid muscle. Grab my chest, I put on the back, and it's not going to be going right down with me. We're going to do it with a 50-year break. If you pull hard and break, uh, it'll break all the bones in the hand. Anywhere you have bone, the skin, it really, really hurts. So if you see sharp teeth on this thing, it goes, uh, this one goes two different ways. That's the first one. That's 2000. Oh, that's, that's, that's I've been teaching with that cane since 2000, and it's still in that condition. So, um, this is nice. You know what I have It's too tall for you. It's, oh, that's too long. And you have to have the cane fitted to you. If it's too short, it's going to hurt your back. If it's too long, you can't control it. So, what we do in some measuring, I bet you to wear your wristbands. You should have your favorite shoes on and one inch above that. And you have full control of it all time. You go too long. For example, I was at a tournament day when I first started going back to Bill Wallace, the center judge, spinning around and it hit the mat and it took off about 30 feet that direction. It was too long. So it took you a few years to figure out how long it would be. But one inch above where your grip spins is nice. And you can spin it as fast as you want. You can get these chains going over 200 miles an hour. I'm teaching the CHP in Nevada and putting the cane in here. And if you hit somebody with that and they chase you, run really fast. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can get them going and see, I wouldn't even warm it up, you'd clock it to 203 miles an hour. So um, if somebody comes in and get ready, you have to have the horn up now. Tom had a way to go to show it tonight, but we get it going pretty quick. I, for me, if I have the horn down, my elbow gets in the way. I don't feel the coordinator is up to the problem. You probably have a different pick of this is problem. For me, I'm lazy, so I do it this way. And I just call it a swing from the holster position, and you can get it going. I recommend you practice with this trying to hit the leaves off trees. If you want to be able to hit the chain Trying to get on a tree and get good enough, you can hit this thing anywhere you want. When you get into the hotel room, use this to push the button with. Get your active. When you first start doing this button by a couple inches, you want to be able to hit that button every time. But this one play with this thing and poke it in the air somewhere. Always have a target to shoot for. That make you sense so far? One of, the, one of the best ways to practice on the steering technique. Because what you want to do is you want to get somebody basically between the clavicle and the navel. If you hit off the side, you're just going to slip off the side. If they're well built, you're really going to slide off. If you go too high, they got a chance to flinch and you're going to miss off this side. So if you look at the clavicle line, the umbilicus line here, and you just go dead center anywhere in that box, you're going to cause them either to pause, back up, you're going to make that impact. Great way to practice that is in the garage, in the office, in your wife's dressing area. Just suspend a tennis ball on a string every time you go high. Just make sure you dead center hit that. You know when you dead center hit it because it's going to go directly away from you. If it starts making a circle, then you quance off either side. And the more you practice, the you're going to get. These canes are larger around the clump area here. This is the crook, this is the horn, the shaft, and this is the tip. You guys know what I'm talking about. I have all 99% of my canes will go around some of that. When I first started making these, I used to have them come in this way, but I like to tear out the water or harder here so you can beat that. But number one, you don't want to get blood on you anymore, it's too contaminated. So I stay away from that now. But I get this around your neck. I can make you go anywhere I want. Don't believe me? But anyway, play with the cane, get used to it. Um, I teach people how to spin a cane, okay, figure eights, here, and even helicopter course. This can save your life. I had a guy with a knife, so I can catch you anytime I want. I said, come get me. He will come get me. Okay? And learn how to hit cars. So you have to use this cane, it's just like a gun. Don't have to buy lightning. Give me what you got to stop the 
situation where you shouldn't swing around the field. Nice thing about this though, if you do swing hit the guy, it's not going to cost you what a gun would cost. You can buy yourself a lawyer in this world. You can carry these anywhere in the world. I got on the airplane the first day coming here. It's a medical device. They're not allowed to ask you why you're carrying it. Yeah, ADA, ADA law says that because it has a hook, it's a medical device. The HIPAA Act says they can't ask you why you have it. That's an invasion of your medical privacy. So, ADA says you can carry it. HIPAA says they can't ask you why. Neither law says that you have to do this with it. Both laws say you can carry it like this anywhere you want to go, and that's legal, and they can't ask why you have that. Do you have a bad back? Is your knee injured? I'll tell you the one thing that'll mess you up on an airplane, though, if you do use this to get on the plane early or get through TSA early, did that twice a day. <laughs> uh, if you have an exit row seat, you're screwed. So then you got an option. Do I want to get on the plane early or do I want to sit in the exit row? That's the only decision you have to make because if you get on the plane early with this, you have to give up your exit row seat. That would be two weeks ago. But anyway. You didn't give a business card? Did they say okay? <coughs> no, 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 no. But, uh, so you have to make your options. I'd rather get on the plane early and get overhead space for my bags and send in. So I gave up the exit row seat. Okay. Um, any questions so far? By, by the way, what you just saw happens to me every day. I drop my canes. I've been teaching with this cane since 2000. I've dropped this cane probably 2,000 times. Don't panic when you drop your cane and don't think it's a mistake. It's just a learning process. It happens. One of the reasons I teach people how to pull the cane is to stop the situation. I've had at least, I would say, 200 people call me and said, Three guys are coming at me. I did a figure eight and posted it and did that. Quick story, guys waiting for his wife to stop and rob 11.45 at night. She got off at midnight. He's three begins, he had a little cerebral bullet, plus he smoked cigarettes, and then he has to start with his cane. Three punk kids come up to him and say, hey old man, you got any extra cigarettes? How about some money? He stepped away from the car and went, what did you say? And they helped him So you I like to teach to get out of the situation first. But then if you have to get in the situation, you go to 100%. And it, does, it shouldn't take you over two or three seconds to block somebody where you need to. If you hit somebody in the head with one hand, you're probably going to kill them. Or I should probably say about the shoulder. You kill them quickly. Because if you the ground the floor and everything else, you get this thing going. You can crack a coconut with these things without any problems. I recommend you try to hit somebody in the knee, take out a rib, break the arm, whatever you want to do, hit them in the shin. If you hit them in the head, they're probably not going to ever move again. You don't want to kill somebody. For me, at my age, 39 and a half, there's more than one of my kids. I'd rather be tried by 12 and 30 by 6. Okay? Now, I'm going to start, going to start off with showing you a few blocks, and then we're going to fire around, and then we're going to have to How much time do you have here? As long as you want. Okay, spread out, give yourselves a room. If somebody's coming at you, you don't know how to block, you won't have time to strike. So learn the blocks, then learn the strike, and then every time you do a block, I'll make you do a strike. And do the strike a different way. There's 26 ways to hold the game. And there's probably, I would say, 75 to 100 different techniques every way to hold the game. So there's lots of techniques you can use. It all depends on uh, how many are coming at you from what direction. So play with the cane, use one hand, use two hands. Two hand and is for close support, one hand keeps you five feet away. Okay? My guy's the chief of, of Black County. Somebody comes up with him and he'll go close enough whatever you want. Most of them will back off and say, oh, I just want to time with you. Okay? People have their own space area. What's going on out there right now? If you get close enough to it, they'll take care of it. But keep them as far away as you want, you feel safe. If you did that with a gun, you'd be arrested. Cane or not. It's a medical device. You never tell people it's for self defense, especially security. Medical device, a crutch, it's a cane. That can save your life. Now, I made a cane. Choice. I started putting 
This is actually what I call my derby style. This year you think being illegal to carry, but technically it's more comfortable, especially if pressing your palm on it or turning it around and resting your thumb or finger on it. But think about somebody attacking you. If I hit them in the throat, it's not going to slip off. If I tap them in the head, it's going to take care of business. And most of the ones I make aren't quite this big, but she really wanted something nasty, so she really took it. And I love making custom paint. I make the paint any way you want it, as long as you guys can do it. This cane, I put in two blind dowels, and I glue it together with JV Well. That will hold 5,500 pounds. I must have tested about 10 different glues. I've had people tell me which is the best. There's the best, la da da da. JV Well is the best I can find. The strongest one happens to be gray. She wanted her cane stained. Anybody who wants her cane stained, I go with the J.B. Well Gray, which holds 5,500 pounds. Clear stuff, which is good, but only holds 4,400 pounds, which is pretty strong. But depending on the angle of the angle you put your weight against here, you have had, had, had some come loose. But J.B. Well is a strong glue that I've been find. As far as the street canes go, the shark's teeth, and all the dance news you can put on there with the head knock and everything else. I only had to give an answer once, and that was at uh, airport security in Frankfurt right after 9 11. And it was actually this cane. And they took it from me, and they were looking at it, and they said, It's very interesting. I said, It's hand carved. Oh, that's really nice. That's only, you know, that's all the answer you need to give anybody. If you get, if you get challenged on the cane, the fact of the matter is, it's a hand carved cane. Every cane that comes out of Cane Masters is hand carved. And once you tell them that, they back off because to them that's as expensive. So they give it back to you real quick before they drop it and screw it up and you want a new one. Another quick story about TSA. I brought you there, I had a cane identical to this, except for it had so the horn was a little bit sharper. It had yin and yang eyes in it. And two security guards picked it up, they were looking at it, they're talking to each other, they're putting their finger on the beak, and the beak was sharper than this. And they look around and they go, I'm going over, brother, here I go. I walk up, they finger on the, on the beak, it's sharp, and they go, nice eyes. <laughs> and one guy goes, it's kind of sharp down here. I said, well, it's an eagle knocked up. <laughs> they laugh, and the other guy goes, well, what are all these notches for? I said, those are for the people that I killed. <laughs> and I went and got on the airplane first. But usually I tell them either for the exercise system, I have this with a band, you have a complete gym. The exercise, you can do standing up, sitting down, or laying down. So you have no excuse uh, while you're watching TV not to exercise or laying in bed. But this here uh, is a very nasty cane. And I don't know who's going to partner up with you. They're not going to like this. <laughs> you might have to do this off the wrong day. That's why I. Okay? If you get a partner and they do have a nasty horn on there, say thank you very much and try to find somebody else because you can get hurt. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Okay? If you, if you find it's uncomfortable, just switch out for the train. Okay? No problem there. You press the jet. Let's get started. There's two hand blocks and one handed block. We're going to go quickly today. Some people will go through more of this stuff. We're going to go straight to two handed blocks. Two handed blocks are stronger. They can take care of it better. But you want to know one hand and two hand block because you don't know where you're going to be. What happens if you stand right here when the situation happens? You can't use two hands. You've got something in your way. Like I was teaching one of my private students, he came in and he said, okay, let's get started. And I said, okay, I'm going to do a hallway. When you're in a hallway, think about what you can do with a cane. Everything is different. So when you practice, practice in places where you where it's tight. Out here in the open, things are nice and easy. That's not what's going to happen out in the street. If I showed you 500 techniques today, you're going to need number 601 tomorrow. Get them when it ever happens. Okay? Walking with a cane. You'll see a lot of seniors or whatever walking like this, their head down is like this. They are walking targets. After you learn how to play with a cane, if it doesn't empower you, number one, something's wrong. You should be able to learn how to walk. Style, lift up your head, carry it this way. I like carrying it this way because no matter what happens, I can take care of business. If somebody tries to do with a baseball bat, I can walk and walk and get out of the way. If I carry it this way, I can slide off. So it's smarter to carry your cane, put the horn forward. Then you 
block arms, and if you try to squeeze somebody's the arm, I can block your arm, and I can lock it up so you can't get out of there. Okay? If you're in a spot where you think people are watching every once in a while, carry it and give it a spin. And keep on walking. They won't want to bother you. Most thugs are pretty well chicken. They don't want to get hurt to the nose. So walk the style, stand up straight. And most of you guys, especially, it's funny when I do seniors and police officers, police officers usually walk into an attitude, what you can you do? And usually within about 10 minutes, I wrap around the neck and have a stand a little faster. So nobody in this two hours is going to do Walk. Some people say to get to learn how to walk with a pebble in your shoe. In fact, uh, Dave and Abbott came up with that. You don't need to. There's nothing in the rule, like Tom said, where you have to listen to carry a cane. Just walk normally. This is a medical device. You can carry it anywhere in the world. If they take it away from you and you fall down, who's liable? It's a medical device. Let me ask you, you don't say it's a weapon, it's like self-defense device, it is your medical device that can save your life. Okay, box. Starting from the floor, working out. Someone's trying to hit your left leg, changing your right hand. How many lefties do we have here? Just one, that's about average. <laughs> um, try doing it right and left. You have to wear the cane with both hands and assist when you guys decide to uh, assist when you should wear the cane with both hands anyway. So start with the cane with your right hand. Someone's trying to hit your legs. What's the first thing you should do? Get your leg out of the way. This is a backup. It's just like blocking a, somebody that's coming in your face. You don't use your arm to block with you. Move your head out of the way first and you use your blocking arm the back. You don't want to stand. You never want to stand still. The biggest thing is problems most people they get the cane in hand and they don't want to move from this piece of real estate right here if they're stuck. Learn how to move your feet. Don't cross your feet up. Move sideways forward. I like to go diagonal when I'm fighting. I don't like going straight up and back because you go backwards. I don't have eyes behind my head. I can't move that fast. This guy's coming at me. I got problems. So try to move diagonally. Okay. This is called a group block or a sweep. Trying to get my left leg, I get my left leg out of the way and I sweep. Okay? Learn how to sweep. Keep your tip about an inch off the floor so you might have to bend your legs a little bit. Okay? Your hands should be about a hand apart. If it's too long, but if you don't have the distance, if it's too short, you don't have the strength. So one, one hand apart here, you have good strength and you can't take care of business for you. It won't be too good. So, left leg, try going backwards, and when you get more advanced with the cane, go forward. So if, I, if I have a problem with somebody, you know, where do I want to be? I would like to be here to start with. It's going to be hard for him to hit me, okay, unless he has a cane. If he does attack me, I want to be here. I don't want to be here. Okay, depending on how well you know how to fight. But from here, I can take care of business no matter what I want to do, empty hand or with the cane. Okay, I'm close, I can take care of business. Here, you're always at ground zero. Here, we both have problems. So something happens, he starts to strike me, I'm going to get in close. Whatever I've got to do, I'm going to be in here and give a little bit of my bad breath. Okay, so left leg, right leg. Okay, practice going down, practice coming forward. Practice squeezing low, getting something to try to break your ankle out of the way. Whether it's a chihuahua trying to fight the big toe or whatever it is. Okay, moving up the ladder is a downward block. I want to bring the cane up and down. I don't want to bring it up this way. I might bring whatever's coming at me into my groin area or my face. So it comes up shoulder level and you come down. Stepping forward, stepping backwards. Right leg or left leg. Practice all different ways. Also, you can practice on the sides. You're coming up higher. Torso or side block. You got it. Side block with the tip up. Now, when you block, you want to learn how to give it a push. You don't want to hold it with your hand around here. This is a block. This would be a strike. Everything should be behind your cane. Your cane does all the work. You don't want your elbow on the front or your thumb wrap around it. Here, here, whatever floats your boat. But 
you have your hand open, and when that, whatever's coming at you get close to it, you want to learn how to give it a push. If you stand here hard, blocking, the vibration coming through here is going to bother all your joints and everything else. I give a little bit of push, it takes the vibration away from joints, and it also makes the other person's weapon out of control for a split second, which gives you enough time to take care of business. Make sense? So when you come to here, downward pushes, side blocks, or torso blocks. Right now, torso block, my enemy is in front of me, this is a torso block here, I'm looking at my enemy. Okay, you got tip up and tip down, depending on your next move. Right side and left side. Then we have our diagonal blocks, left side, diagonal block right side, and straight up. Get that push in there. You're dropping the old red bag and that anything yet. <laughs> okay. Those are the, that's the quick synopsis of the blocks. Practicing right handed, practicing left handed. Okay, on your side here. Let's do a left handed real quick. Put the key in your left hand. Room block or sweep. Right side, left side. Downward block, the guy's trying to get between the legs. Team comes up and you push. Torso block, left side, torso block, right side. And you got the high block, diagonal, etc. Practicing right and left hand. If you don't know what the situation is going to be, you might even have at the time someone attacks you, you might be wearing a cast and you might have, have it. One, one hand's all working right compared to the other. Practice with both hands. It's really important. Okay, let's move on to strikes real quick. You got a regular swing. I'm standing here, something's happened. My hand's on the crook. I don't have time to do anything besides swing. Get it out of the way. You're not going to be able to hit everything perfect because swinging from the crook, you don't have very much control. But in anything you do, just back the guy up. Practice backing up, which would be defensive. Practice offensive, coming towards the person. Practice going to the left. Practice going to the right. Practice going behind you, both directions. One thing you want to do when you're carrying a cane especially is be aware. Look around. The next swing strike is coming from here when you have it in the holster area. Okay, you can holster it with a horn down, which I don't recommend. I recommend you put out a holster with the horn up. Horn up. You're not going to hit anybody even try to swing like that right now. Don't do it this way because you might hit somebody. But you, like I said, you can get it going 200 miles an hour, drag, hitting a tree leaf, you have a bag in here, or Bob. Bob loves this guy, he never complains. So you'll see his power in this thing now. In fact, later on, you'll walk by there and hit the guy. Hit this one hell of a strike. You're going to be breaking something. Next. When any ever anything happens with a cane, more than likely you're standing here talking to somebody, you know you have your hand on the top of the crook. You feel uneasy, you just drop your hand down and get a thin. You don't have to make a big deal out of it, but if you think something's going to happen, just drop your hand down to where the grip, grip is. Where that grip is, is one of the strongest points where you can hit and protect yourself with. Okay? I like to tell people to always have two grips, because when you learn how to use this crook, it's a lot of fun. And you don't want to be slipping. When you get in a situation, your hands start to sweat. With this grip on here, you're not going to lose your, your grip of the cane. Does that make sense? That's why I put the grip here to begin with. So you want a low grip and an upper grip. Sorry, my best selling cane is the three grips all the way. I call it extended triple grip. And you have plenty of room to play. Exactly. Okay, so we have going back to strikes. We have a horizontal strike low. Horizontal strike between the hip and the shoulders. And the next one I call the killing strike, which is at the hip. Okay? You have diagonal strikes. You have diagonal right, left down, left to right up, right to left up, left to right down. Okay? Then how to swing and all this stuff here. And the last one, you got vertical strikes. Just don't practice going like this. There's quite a lot of different ways to get a horizontal strike going here. Okay, here, here, straight over here, left side. Practice any way you can. Practice with both hands. If you start.
practice with both hands. If you're right-handed, do 10 times in the right hand and do 20 or 30 times in the left hand. So you can catch up on strength and stuff. Okay? Make sense? Okay, and the last one we have here, you have a poke. A poke is great. It keeps somebody away. If you poke somebody with one hand, you want to make sure, if I hit him in the belly button, his butt's going back, his head's coming forward. If I hit him in the sternum, you're probably going to crack the sternum and he's going backwards. I don't care how good you got that. Grand Master, can I interrupt real quick? No. Thank you. No. <laughs> I, I want to go back to this one-handed spear I talked about practicing on the tennis ball on the strength just because he's doing this technique now. For four years, I carried a cane doing executive protection. And two times, I had to defend a client against oncoming threats. Both times, I used one-handed spear. Both times, it was an oh shit moment for me. Uh, they were street thugs, no weapons came out. It wasn't the predicted threat we were waiting for on clients. And both times, for me, I had a client here, and it was oh shit. First time it ever happened, the guy went straight down. I knocked him back about two feet, he stumbled, lost his footing, and went straight down. We moved on. We got the client. We have to create him out of the situation. We realized as we were leaving, this was actually not the threat we were warned about. It was just a scumbag. Happened one more time in Los Angeles again, and all it was was, that's all it took. Take the guy off his feet, down. The confrontation was over. Did everywhere in the world now there's surveillance video. There's cameras on ATMs. There's cameras that you pull up out of your phone, off of his phone, anybody's phone. Nothing I just did is prosecutable. I didn't break any bones. I didn't. I didn't hit him with enough force to do anything other than knock him back. Fortunately, both guys stumbled because they didn't expect it or see it coming because all they saw was a big fat old ball guy with a cane. And I did this center chest and they went down, if they had decided to file charges, do anything else, nothing would have happened to me on that. Because they had no permanent damage and they were actually coming at me when it happened. So what Grandmaster was saying is, that's enough to stop this conversation if you do it efficiently. Then two hand. I used to call this a double-handed uh, poke, but now I have two in my arm, but it's called the other day, shooting is a big hand thing. Okay? It's not a pool shooting contest. Okay? This doesn't work. You have to have it here. Two ways to hold your hand. When I teach police officers, 95% of them want to grab it this way because they're using the blanket here on the floors or the topics. Okay? Here, the demonstration now. If I have my hand like this, that's as far as I can go. If I just take my hand and turn it over, your wrist is not locked up. Depending on your next move, I recommend you're going to have to do it palm up, not palm down. Got a good tight grip on there, it depends what your next move is going to be. But get that palm up because you can go out the next six or seven inches at least. Okay? And like I said before, I hit it with the belly button, the bus going back, it has to come forward. Depending on what you want to do, that can be fun too. But you hit them in the sternum, they're going back. Even a guy in palm size, he's going to go back. He'll probably end up with a crack sternum and be used two hands. And you don't want to ever just go, oh, gotcha. It's in and bring it back as fast as you can. Uh, some people go on how to retrieve your cane after you come in here they grab the cane. There's different ways to grab it, there's a lot of ways to get the cane back. Depending on the size of the guy, what's going on, and there's probably 30 different ways to get the cane back. Okay? There's nothing to worry about when you grab the cane. Or grab the cane. Now, when you learn all these blocks and you learn the strikes, when something happens here, you do a block and then you do a strike. Learn how to strike with one hand poke, two hands, learn how to use the crook, learn how to use the tip, learn how to use the shaft. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Questions on that? So every time you show any kind of a block, whether it's a low block, but it's a high block, back it up so everything gets to become one move. A block is a strike. Okay, just like Connors, most of the blocks supposed in Connors are a block and a strike together. Same thing with the cane. Learn every time you do a block, whatever it is, even a low block here, boom. 
Okay? Learn how to switch hands. Like when I'm fighting Alan here and he sees the cane here, he can go, oh, he has to step forward to hit me. No, I don't. I can just switch hands. That move is up 18 inches real fast. Play with the cane. Learn how to use two hands, switch you back and forth. Learn how to do a pop-up. That's what I call them pop-ups right here. Okay? It's real simple to do. There's a lot of situations where you want to get this cane up here and take care of business. Pop the guy in the chest, grab him this thing around. And learn how to play with this crook. Whenever you hit somebody, if I'm playing tennis here, here, boom, I'm going to be in here. And he, he can't back up. Back up. I can do whatever I want to do. If I want to get serious, I can take the clips. Either direction. No, I can chuck the neck just to finish. Any questions on that? Let's, when I start classes at home, there's three exercises we do depending on how long you're going to work out with the cane. When I first started doing the cane, I was doing it eight hours a day. I started developing tendonitis and stuff. So there's exercises we do to stop that. I'm going to go through that real quick. Put the cane in one hand, just put it in your left hand. Now, also get used to putting your cane so the horn is on the inside. Watch. Right, if it comes down, you try to have it on this direction here. And you can grab it, but it's hard. From here, we have it on here, it just falls right in place. We get a good habit of always having the horn on the inside. Okay, stretching. Bring it out, put your hand across your knuckles, pull where it just gives a little bit of stress here. You really feel it up here in your forearm, pull, then bring it to your chest, bring it back, pull it up on your shoulder, back and forth. We'll just do it a few times tonight, but not going to have a swing. So. Okay, next one. Fingers up. Grab your four fingers and pull. You're trying to get your fingers down to your forehand, forearm. I'm almost there. Then do it one finger at a time. Pull on it. Pull one. Take a good breath. Breathe. Pull. Same thing, each and every finger. This also helps you in chin out techniques or hapkido, whatever you want to call this out for wrist locks and stuff. Get yourself all loosened up. Get your thumb, then down here, pull. Go sideways. Here, sideways, turn your hand over, down. Pull, turn it sideways. Last one. Here, back of the knuckle, same thing here. And do it with both hands. It helps prevent carpal tunnel and helps prevent tendonitis. Okay? I had tendonitis so bad as that was 30 years ago, I couldn't shake anybody's hand. They had me on codeine. They wanted to operate. I went to an acupuncturist, three visits, no more problems. I haven't had a problem in 30 years. But same thing here, stretch out your wrist, get this thing here, get your muscles all loose, so you won't end up with tendonitis depending on how much you did. Next, grab the cane in the center here. Grab it tight. Put your hand about an inch from your wrist, loosen it up. These are all loosening up exercises. Don't go 100 miles an hour, just loosen everything up. This is for your own protection. Grab it down here by the one inch above your elbow, go about 280 degrees, keep it tight. Then go by your shoulder, loosen up the cane, and have the cane go at least 360 degrees. Get it loose. Like I said, it's just, just warm ups for your own protection. Okay? Now, strengthening exercises. I'd say this is very important, but I make sure when people are testing for the black, they have to be able to do this at least 60 times. You want to be able to hold the cane at the tip and have the crook out here. Sometimes when you first get started, it's too hard to do, especially with some ladies. It's too hard, you can go in this direction. If you hand it up here, it's still too hard, you can choke up a little bit. So starting from here, let's everybody do this. You tend like your mother-in-law's base, the most precious thing in her life is sitting right there. You're going to come down and pull that. You want to straighten up these muscles so you can either get a strong or right here. So from here, you're trying to break somebody's ankle. Okay, let's just do this 10 times real quick. One, two, not a golf bus. Use your wrist. Bounce back and forth. Five, six. Put your free hand up here. You have to that too. That's where you want to keep it when you're carrying it up there. Okay? Now, see now you're going all the way through here. Stop it right here. Find a line, pull back, create that line. 
building up your forearms so you have complete control of this game. You can hit somebody as hard as you want, and you can stop from hitting somebody. Okay, next exercise, same thing, but you want to go two sides, around. You're breaking the guy's ankle on both sides. Do 10 of these real quick. Pull back, pull down hard. You want to go hard and fast, pull back hard and fast. If you're going like this, it's not going to help anything. You want to stop it. Am I making sense here? Okay. Do the 10 of these. The last one I require is you want to do it at your head level. You want to hit right ear, left ear, top of the head. These are strengthening exercises. You want to build yourself up to at least 60 of these. Let's do 10 of them real quick. Ready? One. Two, ear, ear, head. Ear, ear, head. Five, harder, faster. All the way around. Full swings. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. Oh, well, whatever. You're this big. No, stop it. Pull it. Stop. Pull. Stop. Pull. Okay, so you know what lock funny? Do it with your non-dominant hand. Learn how to do it with your hand up here. Oh, okay, so you're in a cane situation when you're have you see you have to use it for a fight, automatically your hand should come up here because you want to use this for blocking or grabbing or whatever. It's not going to do any good down here. Learn how to the free hand always stays up here. You want to have your palm towards your heart because of the guy has a knife and you have it out like this, he cuts you here, you don't have any fingers you should do. Anymore. You might hear, you might bleed a little bit, but here you can lose all of your ligaments. Make sense? Learn how to keep your free hand up here, whether it's right hand or left hand. Okay, once again, one, two. You guys are going to notice with your non-dominant hand, it gets a little tough. Okay? So you want to learn how to have full control with both hands. Okay? Now do it both sides. One and two. All the way around. Remember, that price of the face is right here. You want to miss it by a hair. I like to always move my feet around. You don't have to admit that I'm not room. But learn how to swing and hit the target you're going at. The last one, ear, ear, head. Build yourself up to 60. I recommend most people start at 20 if they can. It's a tough exercise. You're going to feel your wrist. If you want to do it hard, you're tending like you're going to knock somebody out. Take them out by the ear, ear, and top of the head. That make sense? <laughs> Three hands up here. <laughs> Feel that, don't you? <laughs> Those are great warm up straightening exercises. I highly recommend it. Okay. Any questions about the warm ups? Do it. It's going to save you from getting tense. You, get, you get serious with the game. Most of you guys are going to fall in love with this. You're standing. I was in Las Vegas. Had a girlfriend. Her kids, my kids were there. Hour and a half wait for a steak and lobster from the fish. Major D walked all the way in the line and said, Sir, can you follow me? And I said, Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole family walked up to the front line. When you go into the store, you have a cane. People will run to you to try to help you. I like I've it. had people carry my luggage. I <laughs> tell them, I can carry my own luggage. Wait, wait, oh, oh, wait, that was me. me. <laughs> 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 Always trying to get to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I can't, I've had a lead that I'd say 50 people want to carry my luggage. Okay? People are nice, a lot of them. But then you have these punk kids. They'll see you in the store with your cane, and they'll come by and Okay. I had one kid do that, and he came right back around, hit him in the back of the head. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> but the, the punk kids out there, they don't care. But I had one gentleman, one of my students in Florida. He was a uh, colonel, uh, MP, in the, uh, I believe it was in the Army. Might have been the Marines. But anyway, uh, he joined the police force in uh, Florida, had an accident on duty. Lost and used the legs for a while, had to use a cane. He went to the store and the kid would kick the cane out and he fell down. He was scared to leave his house. He was on a plane one time, 
One of my students in there, he saw him with the cane, he put the cane above we'll there, and he goes, oh, what's your disability? He goes, huh? Disability about what? You got a cane. He told him about me, he called up. About, oh, a year later, he called me after, he happened to have a TV station there, he got a job at. But he uh, ended up going home, two burglars were in his house, he had them both sitting on the couch waiting for the police. <laughs> Tool. You act kind of shit, you're not going to be changing Okay? But it, it, it's, uh, it, these things work. I get calls all the time saying uh, how uh, the guys are sitting there trying to break into the car. They're, chasing, they're following his wife out of the medical building or whatever it was. These things, are, you're going to fall in love with this. It's fun. Learn how to swing it. Learn how to have fun with it. Practice. I know when I walk down the street, I see somebody there, he might look at me twice, and I sit there and go, he comes after me, I don't know, this and that. Okay? Think about different situations. It's, it's kind of fun. Do you ever do that kind of stuff, Tom? No, I never fantasize about liking people with my kids. Oh. No, that's a rumor. That's a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's get a partner. If you want to get a drink, um,
I just twist my wrists up, and then I'm going to roll the boat through, and I'm going to drive the point of the crook through his body and tear him open. Okay? If he throws that right punch, boom, here, and I step through, and I rip out his liver. Same type of technique. This is a hook tear. Hook tear. He throws that right punch. Fan block. Okay? Same technique. Fan block. You guys just did this. Then I get my two-handed grip here. I come through and I rip out his liver. Throws that right punch. Fan block, two-handed grip. And I bury it right into his quad, and I rip off his quad. We practiced this on raw hot rolls wrapped in duct tape. And his street canes go right through that duct tape and tear through the hot rolls. It's a fun party trick, too. You can impress your guests with that before you throw the meat on the bargain. Okay? So what I, what I want to see you do with your partners is, again, fan block, grab, so you have a two-handed grip now, which is more power, as Grandmaster keeps pointing out, and then step in and just find a target in here. If he's coming in to grab me, I can stop him with that one-handed spear. He comes back again. It's a power strike now. I come back, and then I tear off his plot. Pharaoh? I like it. I need a vicious guy to play with. <laughs> I do chess parties on Sundays. Yeah, I don't want to get tired. This is just a chair. I do everything kind of semi civilized. You can take the idea. You've got to take what you want to take. Yeah. 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 Yes. Excuse me, if I'm doing this with my left hand, he can attack me with his left hand. 
I'm doing this, he's tacking right here. So he just has to go to the left hand. Right. More than likely, you want to practice the left hand against the right hand. Okay? So you can say, either in the face or move the other way.
and, 20, and 32 caliber cane guns that you can buy. I shot the 20 gauge. Yeah, that hurt for a month. Uh, <laughs> so I don't recommend that. Uh, they take it away and they'll x-ray it and they'll give you another cane. It's still another book of cane. Two, I started in cane in 1994. Two trips since 1994 were overnight business trips when you could actually still take an overnight business trip. It was pre-9-11. Both times I was like, ah, I got a laptop, bang, I was like, I don't want to carry the cane. By the time I landed at the next city, I said to the taxi driver, take me to the nearest pharmacy on the way to the hotel. Because I, I got to the point that I am unarmed without it. I feel naked without the cane. So the two times I've been on trips since 1994 that I didn't take a cane with me, I ended up buying a cane at a, at a uh, drugstore on the way to my hotel because any hooked cane works. However, drugstore cane is thinner wood, it's cheaper wood, or it's aluminum and lightweight. You can't so, that <laughs> yeah, the, the, the crook of the cane comes in real tight because they presume it's for somebody who has a physical disability or has weakness, and so they curve them in real deep, and you can't use a lot of these techniques with those drugstore canes. They're inefficient, but they're more efficient than not having one at all. It is funny because I have done this 55 years and he's been doing it right about the same time. I don't know, I leave the house without it. I'm going, I'm going to have to get it somewhere. Yeah. And sometimes I go there and I'll get the can and go, oh shit, I don't know how to fight anything. <laughs> but it, this becomes your best friend. Well, we just we just went to Maui for uh, two weeks and I had a beach cane. And then I had the semi-formal cane for Christmas and New Year's Eve, which is a little dark, a little nicer <laughs> cut. Then I had my normal street cane. Uh, and I carried all three on the plane. Today I got on a plane with a bag full of uh, seven canes for tomorrow's seminars. Training canes. They X-ray They've only asked me once. What's with all the canes? I sell canes. Oh, that's cool. And so if I get on, if I get on an airplane with seven of these, you're not going to have a problem going anywhere with one. And I was just telling Dennis a story that I got a call from the Secret Service during George W. Bush's second term and President Obama's first term. Because we teach the Secret Service shooting, and both times they called me up and said, you sack of crap. <laughs> because my clients wanted to see if they could get these canes, his street canes, into the White House with the President for Black Tie event, and they did. And the secret, we trained the Secret Service, the Secret Service knows me, they know my system, they know the canes, and they x-rayed them and handed them back and called me with nasty names on the phone. But it's the law. Sorry. It's a fun tool. It's only a stick. It's not rocket science. If you think of an idea how to use it, try it. Every, every technique is different. It depends on your, your body. My techniques that I love might not work for you. So if you're, if you're doing something, your brain says, try this, give it a try. You only have to know half a dozen techniques to take care of yourself. Okay? So be aware. If you have a cane, make sure you keep looking around. See what's still looking at you. You gotta stay awake. Any answers? Any questions? Anyone call tonight? Thank you very much. Hey, everyone. Thank you. Raise your hand tomorrow. Sunday. What time is it? Ten o'clock. Good. We'll have a lot more fun. Good. Y'all welcome to come and make a long day. You guys, you guys were having breakfast or cancer? I took a, I took a Benedict to his house this morning.